Suddenly there were these big movie stages and live action sets and, and artists. And I thought, hey, isn't it marvelous? These people can walk through a door, sit down, and they talk in sync. You know, their mouths move and they're in sync with the dialogue. They can pick up telephones. This is really wonderful. Directing artists was a totally different thing for me. Terrifying. I had a nice little spot on the way to work that I would get out of the car, be sick and carry on and just hope that a bus would hit you on the way. And who will command this international band of heroes? Ed Bishop is one of the most talented people I've ever worked with. And my only sadness was that uh, he didn't go on to become an international star. I would have loved him to have perhaps been James Bond. They started to dye my hair. And in those days, they, they, uh, they didn't have unisex beauty salon, so I had to go to a woman's beauty salon in Mayfair in London and sit there under the hairdryer with a whole room full of women, and that was really bad news. Oh, UFO was brilliant, yeah. The costumes, the wigs, Gabrielle Drake being very sexy. I had to do a sort of demonstration, a sort of, you know, unvelcroing it and taking the bits off and then you were just left with the, the sort of the silver bit and a mini skirt but golly you couldn't have got dressed that quickly with it I mean it took some getting into <laughs> I believe the series became very very popular in Japan and we subsequently heard that a lot of the Japanese had adopted this hairstyle <laughs> it was a great revelation going to rushes and seeing the stuff that we weren't involved in you know that the spacecraft landing and you saw this incredible machine coming in over the sea and landing and then you'd see this huge Wellington boot come in and pick it up. <laughs> if you ask me which were the difficult shots to do, I think maybe on reflection I should say flying, those damn flying saucers. The top part was held on four wires and in the actual um, glass, or the perspex part of it, we had a motor. And so the bottom part actually spun and on that part, we had these, what I keep referring to as paddles. And I covered those with a very highly reflective tape so that when it was going around, it caught the light, it would flash and strobe and just make the uh, flying saucer have this sort of ethereal look to it. I remember that actually we'd been filming UFO for a little while. And um, there was the first moon landing that ever was. And it was really extraordinary because, you know, you saw all the close-ups of all the machinery and everything. And, and it looked exactly like our studio set. I mean, amazing. You'd have thought that they'd have copied ours. Saturation density? We did anticipate the, the gull-wing doors, cars.